IFRS is intended for multiple countries with different cultural, legal, and commercial standards. While IFRS is principles based, US GAAP is rules based with extensive interpretive guidance for individual industries and specific examples for auditors and practitioners. Full disclosure principle. The full disclosure principle states that companies should provide information that is of sufficient importance to influence the judgment and decisions of an informed user. The full disclosure principle recognizes that the information included in financial reports reflects judgment and trade-offs. These trade-offs attempt to provide sufficient detail to disclose information that will make a difference to users while providing sufficient condensation so that the information is understandable, keeping in mind the costs of preparing the information and using the information. Self-correcting error A self-correcting error is one that will correct itself in time even if it is not discovered. The miscounting of inventory is a self-correcting error. While the error in ending inventory will have an effect on two balance sheets and two income statements. If inventory is correctly counted at the end of the next year, then there will be no further errors as a result of the miscounting. Classification of extraordinary items. Here are two types of the extraordinary items. Number one, unusual nature. Unusual nature is the event or transaction should be highly abnormal and be clearly unrelated to the ordinary and typical activities of the company. Number two, infrequency of the occurrence. The event or transaction should be something the company does not reasonably expect to recur in the foreseeable future. Solvency. Solvency refers to the company's ability to pay its obligations when they are due. A company with a high level of long-term debt relative to its assets has lower solvency than a company with a lower level of long-term debt. Liquidity Liquidity refers to the time expected to elapse until an asset is converted into cash or until a liability needs to be paid. The greater the company's liquidity is, the lower its risk of failure. Operating activities Operating activities includes the cash received from customers and cash paid to suppliers in the course of the company's primary business activity, interest paid on bonds and other debt such as loans, leases and mortgages. Interest received and dividends received from debt and equity investments. Cash paid to the government for taxes and cash received back from the government as a tax refunds are generally operating activities. Cash flows from the purchase, sale and maturity of trading securities usually will be classified as operating activities not the investing activities. Investing activities Investing activities includes 
the purchasing and selling property plant and equipment making and collecting loans to other parties acquiring and disposing of available for sale or held to maturity investments such as the equities and debt instruments financing activities financing activities includes the issuance of a stock treasury stock transactions paying dividends issuing debt such as bonds obtaining a loan and repayment of principal on debt obligations including repayment of the principal portion of capital lease payments for fixed assets short term receivables valuation for financial statement presentation short term receivables are valued and reported at net realizable value or the net amount of cash expected to be received the net amount the firm expects to receive is most likely different from the amount that is legally due this difference between these two amounts is because some customers will not pay what they owe and there may be returns expected in the future therefore determining the net realizable value of accounts receivable involves estimation of uncollectible receivables and any returns or allowances to be granted property plant and equipment property plant and equipment are tangible assets used in operations and which will continue to be used beyond the end of the current period when the fixed assets are purchased they are recorded at their cost including installation cost needed to bring the asset to usable condition the cost is then expensed over the life of the asset through depreciation depreciation methods in double declining balance method we use a rate that is two times the percentage that would be recognized under the straight line method in addition that percentage is applied to the net book value of the asset at the beginning of each year the annual depreciation expense is calculated as double declining rate multiplied by the book value of the asset at the beginning of the year straight line depreciation is the simplest method and results in an equal amount of the depreciation expense charged to the income statement each period it is calculated as depreciable amount divided by the estimated useful life in this sum of the years and digits method the amount of depreciation to be recorded for any given period is calculated using fractions based on the estimated useful life of the asset under the sum of the years and digits method the depreciable base is multiplied by a fraction that is determined using the useful life of the asset the denominator is a sum of all of its expected years of the life the sum of the years digits is equals to the bracket open n into n plus 1 bracket close divided by the 2 under the units of production method the number of units the asset will be able to produce over its useful life is determined then the appropriate ratio of the depreciable amount is recognized as a depreciation expense for each of the assets estimated useful life based on the actual production of the asset during that period intangible assets intangible assets do not have the physical substance but they provide benefit to the firm over a period of time intangible assets may either purchased or developed internally leasehold improvements leasehold improvements are additions a lessee makes to a building or property that the lessee cannot remove when the lease period is over for example if a lessee purchases an air conditioning system or a leased building it is considered a leasehold improvement and cannot be uninstalled and taken away once the lease expires the cost of leasehold improvement should be amortized over the shorter of the following the remaining lease term or the useful life of the improvements long term construction contract there are two types of long term construction contract and they are completed contract method under the completed contract method 
profit is recognized only at the completion of the contract. Any expected losses that may be incurred must be recognized in the period when they become known. This method is prohibited under the IFRS. Percentage of the completion method. Under the percentage of completion method, profit is recognized as it is earned throughout the process of completing the project. Like the completed contract method, any expected losses that may be incurred must be recognized in the period when they become known. Appropriated retained earnings. Appropriated retained earnings are retained earnings that are not distributed to the shareholders. A company may decide to appropriate retained earnings for several reasons. Creating a reserve to build a plan, acquisitions, debt reduction, meeting the requirements of a bond or a restriction on the payment of dividends imposed by a loan covenant, Providing for research and development or new product development, marketing campaigns as a reserve against an expected loss, or simply providing for the future. Book income, also known as the accounting income versus the taxable income. A revenue item is recognized as taxable income before it is recognized in the accounting records as revenue. An expense item is deductible from taxable income before it is deducted in the accounting records as an expense. A revenue item is recognized in the accounting records as a revenue before it is recognized as taxable income on the tax return. An expense item is deducted in book income as an expense before it is deductible in taxable income. Permanent timing differences. Permanent timing differences are items that cause differences between the taxable income and accounting income but do not reverse over time. Permanent differences do not give rise to defer tax assets or liabilities because of the fact that by definition, a permanent timing difference is something that will be recognized for either the book or the tax purposes, but not the both. Differences between the preferred shares and the bonds. A company not paying dividends on the preferred shares in a certain period does not constitute a default. While preferred shares have a preference in dividends over the common shares, the receipt of dividends is not guaranteed for the preferred shareholders. Preferred shares do not have a face amount that needs to be repaid at a maturity date in the future the way bonds do. Deferred tax asset An item that causes the taxable income in the current period to be greater than the accounting income in the current period creates a deferred tax asset. Because taxable income is higher than the accounting income, the company has to pay more taxes than its book income indicates. Therefore, accounting purposes, the overpayment is a prepaid tax or a defer tax asset. A defer tax asset is created by either a revenue that is taxable in the current period but is not included in accounting income for the current period or an expense that is included in the accounting income but is not deductible for tax purposes in the current period. Defer tax liability. An item that causes taxable income in the current period to be lower than the accounting income in the current period creates a defer tax liability. Because taxable income is lower than the accounting income, the company does not pay as much in taxes as its accounting income indicates. It should pay in the current period. However, the company knows that these temporary timing differences will reverse. It understands that the tax that was not paid this year will need to be paid in the future. Therefore, for accounting purposes, this difference is recorded as a deferred tax liability. A deferred tax liability is created by either a revenue that is included in accounting income but not in taxable income in the current period or an expense that is deductible for tax purposes but is not an expense for book purposes in the current period. Sales with buyback agreement. Sometimes a company may sell its product in one period and at the same time agree to buy it back in a later period. Even though legal title to the product is transferred, the seller may actually retain the risks of ownership. The terms of the agreement need to be analyzed 
to determine whether or not the seller has transferred the risk and reward of ownership to the buyer. Here comes the end of the section A. Now the candidates are requested to please solve the section A true and false questions from the study book to challenge their learning. I am highly grateful to the entire team of Zen Academy for bringing knowledgeable videos for your learning. Please like this video, share it with your friends, colleagues and social media accounts to spread the light of knowledge. May Allah, Lord of the heavens and the earth, bless you in this world and in particular in life hereafter. Amen. Have a nice day. Take care. Allah Hafiz.